very good morning students this is a video which is very important okay very important from clinical point of view because when you will go to the hospitals then you will understand the importance of this topic upper and lower motor neuron okay so in this short video first i will tell you what is an upper and what is a lower motor neuron okay and then in the second part of this video i will tell you the paralysis because of the upper motor neuron and paralysis due to the defect in the lower motor neuron and what is the difference between the two different types of paralysis that is from the upper motor neuron paralysis and the lower motor neuron paralysis i hope that you should i mean say understand it well so that when you will go to the clinical classes okay there should not be any problem okay moving to this slide okay just let me remove this uh, moving to this slide what you will see here is that okay just a minute let me bring the pointer okay which i usually forget to bring it okay this is the highlighter or pointer is here which is moving okay and this will show this diagram will show the presence of the upper and the lower motor neuron okay upper and lower motor neuron now in the this diagram you are seeing the cerebrum that is the brain okay which is in the cranial cavity we are seeing it from the side okay and here this area where this neuron is shown and where the label is given as upper motor neuron is the area which is called as motor area here there are millions of the neuron which are motor neuron in this area what is called as precentral gyrus or the motor cortex and these neurons which are there they send their long axon as i am moving with the pointer they send their long axon in the spinal cord and in the spinal cord the terminal end of this axon will synapse with that of an another motor neuron which is present into the ventral horn of the spinal cord and the axon of this anterior horn cell or motor neuron then will send its axon into the muscle where it will form the neuromuscular junction okay it will form the neuro so the contraction of the skeletal muscle is under the control of this upper motor neuron which is present in brain that is in the cerebrum or in the forebrain in motor area so the contraction of the skeletal muscle is controlled by motor neurons which are present in the motor area and according to the broadman this area is the area number 4 of the cerebrum and it is axon which will have synapse in the spinal cord now this long axonal process which have the synapse in the motor uh, in spinal cord motor neuron which are in the spinal cord is actually the lower motor neuron so the upper motor neuron is in the brain and the lower motor neuron it is present in the anterior horn of the spinal cord and through its axon which passes in the spinal nerve it reaches up to the muscle and thus the impulse reaches up to the muscle okay so the muscle leads to the it leads to the contraction of the skeletal muscle okay the uh, skeletal muscle so there are two different neurons one is the upper motor in the brain and another is in the spinal cord the lower motor neuron so for the contraction of any skeletal muscle we need the two neurons an upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron now thus far the conduction of impulse from brain to the skeletal muscle see this is in coronal section the brain is shown and this is the same area motor area where the neuron is present this red dot is a neuron and it is sending its long axonal process okay this axonal process or fiber motor fiber then comes in the pons and then it comes into medulla where it crosses to the opposite side in the pyramid <coughs> and the fibers from this side will cross to the opposite so there a decussation or criss crossing of the fibers of two side takes place what is called as pyramidal decussation 
and this neurons motor neurons which are present in cerebral cortex upper motor neuron they are also called as the pyramidal cells okay and these fibers of this motor neuron then comes to the opposite half of the spinal cord where it synapses with the motor neuron which i have already told and the axon will go to the same side and will supply to the muscle so the neurons of the motor center of cerebrum that is from the motor cortex are called as the upper motor so these are upper motor neurons and the neurons which are in the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord both are motor in nature and that's why this is called as the lower motor neuron so upper is located in cerebrum and lower is located in the spinal cord and if you take the consideration of the cranial nerves which are present in the brain okay they attacks origin from brain their motor neurons are also there in the similar way in the nucleus of the cranial nerves okay let's move to the next slide where we will learn about what will happen if the paralysis will take place let us come now to the second part of this video upper and lower motor neuron parallel once you have understood what is the upper motor neuron and what is the lower or where they are located let us see their paralysis first we will see the paralysis due to the lower motor neuron that means here any damage to this neuron motor neuron present in the spinal cord which is the lower motor neuron if it is damaged because of the injury or if this neurons are damaged because of the infection for example the polio you must have seen people suffering from polio okay which destroys this most motor neuron or the nerves spinal nerves which are going up to the muscle they are cut or destroyed then this kind of the paralysis will happen that means muscles will not be able to contract because these are not conveying any impulse right up to the muscle okay impulse generation is also not there in the lower motor neuron and its conduction through its axon is not possible so the muscle will not contract because no impulse are coming no acetylcholine is liberating at the neuromuscular junction so muscle will become paralyzed and this kind of paralysis which is due to the destruction of the lower motor neuron or its axon is called as the flaccid paralysis okay that means muscle will become loose and soft okay it will and gradually since this muscle is now no longer contracting no exercise is taking place the actin and myosin filaments of the muscle fibers they will gradually thin and wasted so ultimately the whole muscle will go become thin and wasted this is called as the disuse atrophy because it is not being used hence it is not it is the atrophy or the destruction or damage which is taking place degeneration which is taking place in muscle is because of the lower motor neuron if you see the neighboring diagram here which i have taken from uh, my colleague that is Vishram Singh's book okay and i am thankful to the elsevier for this diagram you will see that this is the muscle of the thigh which leads to the extension of the knee joint when this muscle contract the limb moves upward here okay and this muscle is supplied by the the sensory fibers the green color fiber is sensory fiber which goes and synapses with this red color neuron here is the motor neuron lower motor neuron at the spinal level of l2 l3 and l4 and this fibers comes and uh, innervate this muscle so that whenever there is hmm, Uh, i mean to say a hammer is used a rubber hammer when you will go to your hospital training you will be uh, having this hammer and with the gentle tap on to the ligamentum patelli here okay what will the sensation you will produce the stretch sensation and because of this sensory i mean to say uh, this golgi tendon organ here okay stretch receptors are here and this stretch receptor will get stimulated and this will lead to the hmm, synapse with i mean say because of the synapse with the motor neuron 
this motor neuron will get stimulated it will generate an impulse and this impulse will go to this muscle which is an extensor of the knee joint muscle in front of the thigh and because it will lead to the contraction and the limb will move upward that means it will go towards the extension okay so this is a reflex arc is produced okay once this anterior horn cell or its axons are cut or destroyed then this arc okay this circle is not there so even if you will give a tap here okay there will be no contraction that means there will be no reflex okay of the i mean to say the movement of the extension will remain absent and this is called as the tendon jerk is lost okay this is tendon jerk. that means reflex arc is destroyed and hammering of the ligamentum patelli will not lead to the contraction of the muscle this is a test clinical test by which you can come to know that hmm, there is a lower motor neuron paralysis or not and you will be doing in your patients when you will go to the uh, so but you see the mechanism and why it is there now we go to the next slide where we will see the uh, upper motor neuron paralysis let us see the upper motor neuron paralysis and where is the upper motor you know by this time it is in the cerebrum or in the brain motor area of the brain if this neuron is damaged or its fiber axon is damaged in a its long path anywhere due to the accident due to injury or due to the cerebrovascular accident that means blood supplies stopped here then this neuron will die okay that means this is not able to produce the impulse which will lead to the contraction of the muscle okay so any damage to the upper motor neuron are in, in the pathway here this will lead to the paralysis okay but muscle here will not go to the flaccid or become loose okay or it become thin or will go as vested okay this muscle will not be like that as we have seen in the lower motor neuron type of it so it will it doesn't become flaccid and but on other hand it become rigid tight okay spastic it become spastic and the tendon jerk here become exaggerated because this reflex arc of the sensory and motor part of the reflex arc are intact they are not disturbed so when you will tap here on the ligamentum patelli stretching of the muscle will lead sensory stimuli and this sensation will go to the motor horn cell of the spinal cord and that will get stimulated so the muscle will contract so rather this uh, reflex and the uh, this reflex is called as exaggerated means there will be a jerky the jerky extension of the knee joint so the limb will move forward up and extension towards the extension and this will lead to now you know why there is a exaggerated hmm? uh, i mean to say reflex okay reflex and why muscle is not become flaccid and completely paralyzed but it will become spastic okay it will because of the reflex hmm? as is uh, motor impulses going to the muscle okay muscle the spasticity and tendon jerk is due to the intact spinal reflex it is due to the intact spinal reflex thus the paralysis due to the upper motor neuron is different than that of the lower motor neuron absolutely different so by testing the patient you can say that patient is suffering from upper motor neuron type of paralysis or lower motor that means where is the defect actually whether the defect is somewhere in the cerebrum or in its path or the defect is in the spinal cord or in the spinal nerve that you can make out very well okay so this is the utility of knowing what is upper motor neuron and what is the lower motor neuron and what are these two different types of the paralysis okay let's go to a table where we have compared the upper and lower motor neuron this is from my book itself and this will tell you what are the differences since if you are very newly admitted student you will not follow many of thing i will just 
uh, you give you the major differences here and then you can read yourself this table and if there is any problem in understanding it we feeling then you just uh, ask in the i mean to say in the comment box you can write your question i will reply okay now if you will see the upper motor neuron paralysis or lesion okay which is in the cerebrum that is neuron is and in lower motor where neuron motor neuron is in the spinal cord this lesion may be due to damage to the pyramidal cell means in the cerebral cortex hmm? and pyramidal tract means those axonal fibers coming right up to the spinal uh, cord they are called as pyramidal tract here but in lower motor nerve uh, lesion is due to damage of the motor neurons of anterior horn or the spinal cord or its motor i would say axon okay its axon or motor nuclei of the cranial nerves okay this i have already described second difference is the most common example is hemiplegia you must have seen people are having half of the body paralyzed that is called as hemiplegia okay so because of the upper motor neuron lesion people they suffer from hemiplegia but because of the lower motor neuron lesion okay it is injury because of to the only anterior spinal root or to the motor neuron in the spinal cord um, example are bell's palsy bell's palsy means half of the face muscles are paralyzed okay or poliomyelitis i have given the example you must have seen the people suffering from polio okay where the anterior horn cells are destroyed okay so this will lead to the complete damage and absolutely no i mean say complete paralysis of the muscle okay uplifts hmm? uh, now third difference is that it affects the group of the muscle while the lower it usually affect a single muscle or just two three muscles which are located in that region of the spinal cord the rest of the other difference you may not be able to understand if you have any problem then you write in comment box thank you very much for watching this very important okay part of the hmm, general anatomy upper and lower motor neuron and the paralysis upper and lower motor neuron paralysis this is a again i will say that it is an important short note in examination thank you very much for watching this video